devil's on my track and he's trying to turn me back but i got, got to, to make, make this journey, journey somehow oh somehow somehow, somehow. somehow. oh somehow somehow, somehow. i got to make it Somehow, well, the devil's on my track, and he's trying to turn me back. I said, the devil's on my track, and he's trying to turn me back. I know the devil's on my track, he's trying to turn me back. but I got to make this journey somehow. Hallelujah. Anybody got to make this journey? Anybody want to make this journey? Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to fast and pray. Yeah. Praise the Lord, but we got to make this journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hit it one more time. Oh, somehow. 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 Oh, I got to make this journey. Somehow. Well, the devil's on my track. And he's trying to turn me back. I said, the devil's on my track. And he's trying to turn me back. I know Satan's on my track. And he's trying to turn me back. But I got to make this journey somehow. Oh, somehow. Somehow. Oh, I got to make this journey somehow. Well, the devil's on my track. And he's trying to turn me back. But I got to make this journey somehow. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's a war going on. You better fight. There's a war going on. You better fight. There's a war going on, saints. You better fight. Oh, you better fight. Cause there's a war going on. Oh, there's a war going on. You better fight. There's a war in the spirit. You better fight. And fasting and praying is your weapon. You better fight. Oh, you better fight. Cause there's a war going on. You better fight. You better fight. Hallelujah. You better fight. Yeah. You better fight. You better fight. With all your might. You better fight. You better fight. Cause there's a war going on. You better fight. There's a war going on, saints. And fasting and praying is your weapon. You better fight. Oh, you better fight. Cause there's a war going on. You better fight. You better fight. You better fight. You better fight.
Oh, there's a war in the heavens. Oh, you better fight. Hallelujah. Oh, you better fight. Yeah, you better fight. Hallelujah. You better fight. Yes, you better fight. Say you better fight. The flesh is all against you. But you better fight. this morning. You didn't want to get up out of the bed. The sleepy monster got you. Praise the Lord. But you fought that thing. And you pressed your way. Hallelujah. My God, you had trials that stepped in your way. You had trials that came after you. My God, but you didn't let those things have the victory. You kept on fighting. You kept on pressing your way. My God, and sometimes you need a little encouragement. My God, because you want to quit sometimes. But any fighters in here today? We got any fighters across the street? We got any fighters in the congregation? My God, don't give up, saints. Don't you quit. Keep your faith in the almighty Jesus. Hallelujah, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Praise the Lord. You better fight. Amen. Because there is a war that's going on. Praise the Lord. And you better fight. Amen. Turn to Galatians chapter number five. Praise the Lord. And I want you to find verse. Amen. Ten. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Find verse number 10. Galatians chapter number 5, verse number 10. Thank God for our Facebook viewers, amen, and all of you who may be watching us, amen, on YouTube. God bless you. So glad you were able to tune in in the name of Jesus. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, I encourage you to go to our podcast on Spotify, and you can find it under the name New Ransom Jesus Church. Amen. And you can have access to our podcast, which is free in Jesus' name. Amen. When you have Galatians chapter 5, say amen. Amen. When you have verse number 
Number 10, is that what I said? Yes. Number 10, say I'm with you, Pastor. I'm with you, Pastor. Amen. I was going to talk about something else, but we're going to focus on fighting. Amen, this morning. We got to fight. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Here we go again. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. I didn't need a water though. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 10. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubled you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Praise the Lord. How many know when you walk this way, you're going to have some folks that are trying to trouble you? Right. You have some folks, praise the Lord, who don't have your best interest in mind. That's right. They'll do anything, praise the Lord, to keep you from serving God. Come on and talk to me. Amen. And you may like them for who they are. You may love them for who they are. You may be attracted to their personality, praise the Lord. But they could be like a sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Amen. Amen. They're troubling you. you trying to do God's will and they make it hard for you to do God's will. Praise the Lord. Amen. I got family members, praise the Lord, who, do, who dislike me because of the stance that I take on the word of God. Hallelujah. Right. But I can't let that hold me down. I got to stand for what I know is right. Hallelujah. I got to stand for what I know is correct. And I stand on what the word say. Hallelujah. You can look at me funny all you want. Praise the Lord. You can talk about me behind my back. But I'm glad I got a friend in Jesus. Hallelujah. Who keeps me and holds me and Amen. Takes care of me. Hallelujah. He protects me. He's my shield and my buckler. Hallelujah. He's my provider. Praise the Lord. When I need something. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's my savior. Hallelujah. And the lover of my soul. Come on and talk to me. My God, he wraps me in his arms. So I feel secure and safe. Hallelujah. Then you can disown me if you want to. You can ignore my phone calls if you want to. My God, but you're just troubling me. Praise the Lord. Praise but hallelujah, we got to stand in and fight, baby. Amen. Praise the Lord. And Paul said, I would. They were even cut off. Praise the Lord. Mutilated. Praise the Lord. Then what's trouble you? Look at verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Praise the Lord. God has called us to freedom. Amen. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. He said, you got freedom. You have liberty. But don't use that liberty for a reason to sin. Amen. Don't use that liberty for a reason of unrighteousness. Because, praise the Lord. Amen. The slaves said, I'm free at last. I'm free at last. Thank God I'm free at last. My God, and some of us got that same testimony in our spirit, in our soul. I'm free at last. I'm free at last. Thank God from sin, I'm free at last. God has given you liberty. He's given you freedom and access, praise the Lord, to his kingdom. He says, but don't use this freedom that I give you as a reason to walk after the flesh. 
but by love serve one another. Amen? You got to serve each other in love. That don't mean you holding somebody's hand and kissing them and rubbing on them. Serving them in love, praise the Lord, don't mean that you are having relations with them. Amen. That's right. Amen. Serving them in love meaning you have their best interests in mind Amen. with nothing in return. Amen. And that's the love of Jesus. Amen. That's agape love. You are doing something for someone and expecting nothing in return. Right. Praise the Lord. No greater love than this, that a man will lay down his life for a friend. Amen. Yes, what that yes. means is that there's no love greater than God's love. But we should serve one another in the same love that yes. God loved us. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. When you love people, you'll do things for them. But you have no hidden motives. Praise the Lord. Yes. When you love someone, you'll do something for them. Praise the Lord. You don't expect them to do anything back for you. Why? I'm serving you in love. Praise the Lord. But we live in a day today where people want to know what's in it for me. Amen. What's in it for me? If I help you and give you a hotel to live in, what are you going to do for me? If I give you money or buy you some food or buy you some groceries, what are you going to do for me next week? People live in this era of it's all about me, myself, and I. Praise the Lord. But we got to take that out of the equation. You got to do for others. Praise the Lord. Like God did for you. And all God wants from you is for you to live a holy lifestyle by his spirit. How do you get his spirit? You repent of your sins. Get baptized in Jesus' name. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now you are birthed into the church of God. And when you are birthed into the church of God, you can now live holy and sanctified. Praise the Lord. You don't have to think about it. It's just your lifestyle. Praise the Lord. You don't wake up wondering, oh, I better live right today. No, you that's just built into your mindset. It's built into your heart. Praise the Lord that you don't live right because you're serving the one and only God. Amen. Serve one another Amen. in love. Verse 14, Galatians 5 and 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Praise the Lord. The whole law. You have people nowadays trying to serve the law. You have people who tell me that I'm not walking in the will of God because I worship God on Sunday. Praise the Lord. They tell me I should worship him on a Saturday. Amen. Amen. And then I get in the scriptures and show them that the saints in, in the Bible took up collections on the first day of the week. Amen. Paul was preaching on the first day of the week. Praise the Lord. Amen. They were having worship services on the first day of the week. And at one point, Paul preached a long time on Sunday. Praise the Lord. To a man who was sitting on a third loft, went to sleep and fell down and died. Praise the Lord. And Paul went over there on the first day of the week, laid his hands on him, and that man raised up in his life, came back within him on the first day of the week. Praise the Lord. People have this mindset of having to serve the law, but the Bible tells me that the law is fulfilled in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the law is fulfilled in love. Amen? Love. Praise the Lord. Love one another. If any have a quarrel against any, even as Christ has forgave you, ye do so also. Love. It takes love to forgive. How many believe that? Amen. Don't you know that's the reason you can be forgiven? Amen. Because of love? Amen. The reason you are forgiven and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ is because of love. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Love, praise the Lord. God loves you so much, praise the Lord. He'll forgive all the sins that you've done in your past, and he'll lift you up 
out of that terrible pit, praise the Lord, because of love, praise the Lord. No matter what you've done, you can't be forgiven because of love, hallelujah. It was love that held him to the cross, not the nails that put him on the cross, but love took him up there. Praise the Lord. It was all for love. The love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we preach, we preach in the spirit of love. When we do things for people, we do it as unto the Lord and not as unto man because of love. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's love. And there's no greater love than agape. Don't you know you got different types of love? Amen. You got a fleshly love. Amen. You also have the love of a parent to a child. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then you have agape, which is godly love. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of people are attracted to people because of the fleshly love. I believe it's called eros. Praise the Lord. I can get all the, 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 the Greek names for it. Praise the Lord. But that's a fleshly love. You love someone because of how they look. How they smile, praise the Lord. How their how their personality is, Amen, Amen. You you love them because of the body shape, all this stuff. That's that's the fleshly love. Then you have the other love, which is the love of a parent to a child and a child to a mother. Praise the Lord. That's another love. But then we have the most ultimate love, that agape love, yes. Amen. Amen. That's that godly love. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, brother. That's that love, praise the Lord, that, amen, you give to someone. Amen. You pour out compassion. Oh, hallelujah. You pour out compassion to someone, amen, expecting nothing in return, amen. That's the love that we should live in in this life. That's the love that we should live in with one another. I love your sister. I love your brother, amen, not because I have a hidden motive, but because that's who I am. That's the spirit that dwells in yes, me. Yes. Amen. Yes, that's the spirit that's in my heart. Amen. Amen. There's a song we sing that says, It's in my heart to serve the Lord. Amen. Way down on the inside. It's in my heart Amen. to serve the Lord. And I'll be serving the Lord. Amen. If you don't love people, you ain't got God. Let me say that again. If you don't love people, you don't have the Spirit of God. But the Bible tells us that God is what? Love. love. Amen. Amen. We got all this racism going on in the world. That ain't love. That's hate. You, you, you won't even shake my hand because of my skin color, but you'll let a dog lick you all in the face. That ain't love. That's hate. You won't even feed me, but you'll go feed the stray cats. That ain't love. Amen. I asked a lady at work one day, a few companies ago. I asked a lady, or a group of them actually. I asked them, I said, hey, they, everybody love dogs. They love dogs. And, and they look at dog pictures and dog videos and and, and, and they talk about, oh, my God, if I, if I saw a man in the park walking a dog, I'd just walk up to him and just talk to him. They just love animals. And I asked them a question, a group of them. I asked them a question. I said, if you saw a man, I wasn't talking about skin color, just a person. If you saw a person in a dog drowning in a flood, who would you go say first? And they said, the dog, the dog. And I said, they're like, what? <laughs> the dog? It was a guy that said this. And the female agreed. And I said, a dog? And they said, well, if it was a person I knew and I had a relationship with them, yeah, I'll save them first. But if I didn't know the person, I'll go save the animal. That's terrible. Where's the love of people? Listen, this is real life. This ain't some story I heard. This is what I asked people, and I witnessed this conversation because I started it. But you see the mindsets of individuals. Amen. 
Because they need to have the love of God. Amen. There's no scripture that tells me that Fido, y'all know Fido is, right? The dog. <laughs> There's no scripture that tells me that the dog is going to make it into glory or in hell. But it do talk about individuals. And as the church, we should have the love of God for people so that we can reach individuals. We can touch individuals. Show compassion to one another. Amen. Turn to uh, Matthew chapter 14. Let's talk about compassion for a second. Come on, wind. You better stop, wind. <laughs> Matthew chapter 14. Um, and then find verse. Let's see here. Matthew chapter 14 and I want you to find verse number 11 <clears throat> Amen When you have that sound with you Matthew chapter 14 verse number 11 it Says and his head Was brought in the charger And given to the damsel and she brought it to her mother. I'm talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist preached against King Herod and told King Herod's brother, you can't have your, you can't have your brother's wife. Something like that. You can start at verse 1 and you'll see that story come up. Amen. And he says, verse 12, and his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. Amen. He separated himself. He was by himself. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. So the people knew Jesus. They followed him, walking behind him. Amen. In verse 14, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with what? Compassion. He saw the great number of people, and Jesus was moved with compassion towards them. People can feel compassion. Amen? They can also feel hatred. Y'all know that? That's real. People don't even have to open their mouth, and sometimes we have the thought, uh, something, something ain't right with them. <laughs> I, I felt some kind of bad energy, right? Right. It's from them. Amen. That's real. That's real. And people also feel love. Do you know that's why I came to New Ransom Temple Incorporated? Because of love. I'm from North Carolina. And somebody invited me to go to New Ransom Temple Incorporated. Amen. The church that our church is a part of. And it was love that kept me there. It was the love of the people that I felt. They didn't even tell me they loved me. Oh, we love you so much and hug. They didn't do that. But I could feel it because people feel compassion. They feel love. Amen. And that's why we have to make sure our heart is full of it. When your heart is full of love, when visitors come around, you won't just sit there and let them stay by themselves. You'll go and greet them and talk to them. Amen. When you love people, you'll ask them to come to your worship services because you see that there's a void in their spiritual life and you need them to experience what you have experienced. Now, we can't save people, right? But we can introduce them to the one who saved us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We can not introduce them and give them a salutation. Praise the Lord to Jesus Christ. Amen. So he was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Praise God. And when Praise it was evening, God. his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time has now passed. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. That means food. Buy them some food. Uh, okay. Jesus, these people have hung around this long enough. Let's send them away. It's time for them to go home. Amen. They'll go and get themselves something to eat. Praise the Lord. They'll go get themselves something. And look what Jesus did. Verse 16. This is when you have love for people. But Jesus said unto them, 
They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. Give them something to eat. And they say unto him, Matthew chapter 14 and verse 17. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. Amen. He said, bring them hither to me. Bring the five loaves. Bring the two fish. Amen. Bring them to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and his disciples to the multitude. Amen. I want to insert this real quick. Who blessed the food? Who blessed it? Jesus. Right? He grabbed the five loaves and the fish. Yes. He looked into heaven. He blessed the food. And then he did what? Gave it to who? To the disciples. And the disciples did what? Distributed it out. Right? That's right. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what's happening with the word of God. The bread of life. Amen. The bread of life who is Jesus. We are, we received it. I'm his disciple and I'm distributing it out to you so that you can be full of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Now they had natural bread, but this word of God is spiritual bread. He that thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled. Amen. Verse 20. And they did all eat and were what? Filled. And they took up the fragments, whatever was left over. They took up the remnant that remained 12 baskets full. So they took up the rest of the... Look at this. A multitude of people, right? Thank God for our Facebook viewers and YouTube watchers. In Jesus' name, God bless you. In the name of Jesus. They took up... 12 baskets of leftovers. Praise God. How in the world do you have leftovers when you didn't have enough in the beginning? Amen. Praise the Lord. God stretched that thing, didn't he? Yes, he Don't did. underestimate the God we serve. Amen. And why did Jesus do this? Because he was moved with compassion on them. That's right. He loved them. Amen. He didn't want to send them away hungry, so he fed them. Two fish, five loaves of bread, everybody got not satisfied. They got full. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. And they had 12 baskets. So they had 12 disciples, 12 apostles. Each disciple had a basket of food that they brought back that was left over. Ain't that something? Yeah. Don't underestimate God. He's a provider. Amen. And the reason he provides for us is because he loves us. Yes. Amen. Y'all believe God love you? Amen. Keep your faith in the Almighty. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep your faith in God. Hallelujah. Amen. And let God be God in your life. Amen. Sometimes we try to step in the way and we try to fix it. Sometimes you just got to praise the Lord. I done did all I can do. You got to do this. Praise the Lord. You got to do it. There was a time I was in that position. I had, I had lost my job. Got terminated. Amen. When I got terminated from the job, the weird thing is that they gave me a severance package. Who in the world give you a severance package if you got terminated due to performance? So they told me they terminated me for performance, right? I gave them my explanation. I ain't going to get into the whole story. I'm going somewhere with the story. I ain't going to get into all the details. But it, that made me think, you really don't agree with this. You're just trying to fix something, and I'm the person I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the person who got to go. Praise the Lord. Just like in football, football season about to start up. You might got a terrible GM, general manager. They may be the issue. But they fired a the head coach, make the head coach think he was the issue. Make everybody think the head coach was the issue when they need to get the GM out. Praise the Lord. So I was the fall man, that's how I felt about it. But neither here nor there was a blessing that came out of it. I got terminated. They gave me a severance package. 
That severance package, me and my wife divided that money over four weeks and we said, okay, we're gonna act like this is your paycheck. Boom, boom, boom. At the end of those four weeks, we had no more money. But every single day, just about, for 30 days, if it wasn't every day, I know the first week I was in the library, every day filling out job applications. And then every other couple of days, I went to the library, filling out job I was working to get a job. That's when I found out, trying to find a full-time job is a full-time job. <laughs> Praise the Lord. People say they want to work, but are you putting in the work to get it? Watch this. At the end, I said, Lord, we're at the end of this severance package. I don't know what else to do. I'm applying for jobs. Nobody's calling me back. I'm following up with the jobs I apply for with emails and phone calls. Nobody is responding to me. We got to the last week of that severance package. And I said, Lord, I don't know what else to do. My family needs money. Do you know that week, a credit union called me and said, we want to offer you, we want to set you up for an interview. Praise the Lord. And they sent me up for an interview and I got the job. Look, months later, y'all hold that, uh, go hold that back there, Carly. Go hold that stick. Ain't no sandbag on that one. Amen. I, months later, I was sitting down with one of the HR ladies after I got hired and everything. She told me, she said, I remember you. She said, because you kept on following up and calling. And I told myself, let me call this young man back. He must really be serious. He really want to work. That's why I called you back. Because I was persistent in following up. Hey, I was checking on my job application. I would call up there. I want to talk to HR. And she said, 30, but it took 30 days. But I prayed to God. And when I was down to my last, I'm like, I done did all I could do. Praise the Lord. And the Lord made a way. He made a way. Praise God. So I hope that story encourages you. And you can put that with anything in your life, right? Whether you're sick, whether you're not feeling well, praise the Lord, whether you're having money issues, anything. Have your faith in God. And sometimes God is taking you to a, through a trial to test your faith. Amen. To test to see if you're going to hang in there and if you're going to stick it out. That's what patience is. The Bible says, in your patience, possess ye your souls. Amen. That means in your sticking it out, in your hanging in there, possess your soul. If you quit, you can't make it. Is that right? If you quit the race, how are you going to win? How are you going to finish? Amen? You got to keep pressing your way. Amen? Let's have love. Keep fighting. Yes. Keep amen. fighting. Amen. For your salvation, keep fighting Praise to hang in there with God and show love to everybody you come in contact with. Amen? Let me drop you one more story on you. This lady came in my office uh, two weeks ago, and she was a salesperson. And she was trying to sell some stuff. Amen. And she walks in the office. And she's sitting there talking to me. I said, okay, yeah, we'll do that. So we signed in the paperwork and stuff. Amen. I went to go make a copy of the paperwork. She came back. When I came back, she said, you know what? I, I usually don't do this, but I, I just have to ask you. Because I, I feel a spiritual connection for some reason in here. She said that. We weren't talking about church. We weren't talking about nothing. But... She could feel a difference from when she was out in the lobby to when she came into my office. The atmosphere changed. And she said, I could feel a spiritual connection. Yes. That opened yes. up the door for me yes. to invite her to Amen. church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. We got to stay holy. We got to keep fighting. Amen. And that's how you're going to keep your anointing. Praise the Lord. That's how you're going to keep the anointing. How do you get the anointing, the salvation of God? How do you get the salvation? Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 38. Acts chapter number 2 and verse 38 is how you get saved. So all of you out here in Raytown, if you're shopping at Family Dollar, if you're washing your car, praise the Lord, if you can hear my voice, I'm going to tell you how to get saved. Amen. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse number 38, 
Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's how you get saved. You repent. Repent is a fancy way of saying, stop sinning. Cut your mess out. Turn from your sins. I'm here. Let me talk about myself. If I talk about me, y'all can't get mad, right? I was a drunkard. Amen. I was a clubber. Amen. I was headed in the wrong direction. When I repent, I turned from that stuff and went the other way. That's repent. Amen. So he says repent. That means to turn from your sin. Get baptized. Number two was to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be baptized. Not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but in the name of what? Jesus Christ. You got to be baptized in the name of the one that died for you. Praise the Lord. The baptism is for something. He said be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Remission means forgiveness. So you turn, you turn from the sin, right? Then you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ that washes away and forgives your sins. Amen. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So this scripture, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, it tells us how to get rid of sin, amen, and how to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, you have not had your sins washed away. Some people say, well, the Bible say, confess your sins and he's faithful and just to forgive you. That's after you get saved. That's after you get the Holy Ghost. After you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, yes, you mess up because you're not going to live a perfect life, right? You try your best to go to a perfection. But if you mess up, you then confess your sins to God. What is confession? Admitting that you did wrong. Lord, I done jacked up. I done messed up. You've been honest. Forgive me. He said he's faithful and just to forgive you. But before that, amen, you must repent. Repent is for somebody who's willfully walking this in. Confession, amen, that's for people who messed up. They're saved already and they've slipped. Amen? Now, this is not a slip. <laughs> this is not a slip. I mistakenly go to the liquor store and park my car. I mistakenly, amen, walk in the door and open it up. I mistakenly ask the cashier, uh, where's the Jack Daniels? <laughs> he mistakenly pointed me to the right direction. I mistakenly went and grabbed it and pulled my money out my pocket. I mistakenly turned the cap. I mistakenly turned it up. That ain't no mistake. You just did it. That makes sense? You just did it. Let me tell you about a mistake I made one time. I had just got saved. I played football in college. I'm on the football field. I had just, I was recently saved. I went and make a tackle on somebody. He put a move on me. And I missed it and I rolled over. <laughs> when I missed that tackle, I had one of my fleshly reactions from when I wasn't saved. I said, ah, oh, D-A-M-N. Said a curse word. I got up and I realized what I said. And I said, oh my goodness, I just cursed. Oh my gosh, I just messed up. And I was so godly sorry, I felt bad the rest of the night. I didn't even want to finish playing the rest of the game because I felt like the game is what made me sin. But that was a slip up, that was a reaction. Or somebody about getting a car wreck. Screw it up. And you make slip out a curse word or something, right? You ain't planned that out of your head, did you? But you messed up, right? That's what you confess to God. I didn't mean to do it, Lord, but I did it. I jacked up. I messed up. I need you to forgive me. That's what confession comes in at. Amen? That's why it's written in the book of John, the first John. First John is a letter written back to the church. The book of first John is a letter written to people who are already saved. That's right. But the book of Acts... This is telling us how to get saved. Amen. 
Acts chapter 2 verse 38. You repent. Turn from your sins. You get baptized in Jesus' name. That washes away and forgives your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is how you first get into heaven. Receive the Holy Spirit by obeying Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Amen. God bless you, Raytown. God bless you, Kansas City. God bless you, Facebook and YouTube. And all of you who may be listening on Spotify. Amen. Have a great day.